Hello there everyone, welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Tim Okolova, and someone did post a comment from yesterday asking, Who would win? Sudwest Africa with its Air Force, or the Free Aviators from Russia and their Air Force? That's a good question to ask, I'm not really sure. But our savior in red, white, and blue. After so many years of cruelty and repression, the people of Angola finally have something of an ally in Reichskommissar Schenk. However, as dedicated as the Reichskommissar may be to righting his many wrongs, the danger of discovery and destruction grows greater every passing day. Mueller will try to turn will turn on us, even if the slightest hint of a threat to his chances of profit ever reaches his nose, while that Hutig might do. If he finds evidence to confirm that his long-held paranoia is surely unbearable if we're to quickly succeed. In liberating the people of Angola, we must act firmly, quickly, and above all else in concert with our allies. The Americans have already been a great help in our liberation project, before it, but for it to have any real chance of success, we must bring them in on every single level. Soon, not only American spies will use Sudwestern bases in order to sabotage German war efforts, but they'll have access to our flight patterns, forewarning of both German fighter and bomber missions, and our open assistance in preparing for the handover of the nation to the Angolan Liberation Forces. The day that people of the region are finally free, free from the German tyranny draws ever nearer. As does Shanks' redemption, if we're careful, if we're lucky, we will be remembered in this land as something more than just evil once we're gone. We must trust the Americans in the fires of suffering. There is no silence in the high wild, for it is broken by the crunching of boots, and on the sandy road through the rocks and dust, the land without water before that deep in the earth's embrace, the soldiers fearing to step too far into the arid vastness, and be lost through the agony and solitude of the high places, backed by the bleak vastness of the sky, the weary Americans pass through the kraal. It was barely a village. A collection of shacks made of rubbish and dry wood, a handful of emaciated goats and sheep who raised, uh, gazed forlornly on the men as they made their way into the center of the feeble settlement. Their leader, a boy with patchy fuzz on his upper lips, looked around him into the houses and saw in the gaps between planks the sullen red faces sneering at him with the hateful eyes of the conquered. Evacuate, he called, once, twice. They only glared and snarled in their pig speech, and the boy felt his anger stoked at the contempt. Forward, he motioned, and the masked men approached their strange machines, and the villagers watched them in confusion. Without further warning, Warning, fire poured forth and the shacks went up in flames, screaming. They began to flee, clutching the babies and valuables, crashing to the ground as shots ripped through the air, tearing into the sunburned skin and fountains of blood. Within minutes, all the all-consuming fire cleansed the village from the face of the earth. All that remained was the ash and the bodies, and the boy commander gazing upon the destruction he had wrought with faraway eyes. Sifting through the remains, the Americans found no evidence of the hidden boar cache they had come to so far to find. As dry thunder boomed over the high hill, they turned back and returned the way they had come, between the jagged rocks back down to the sandy road. Anger's like fire and it burns all clean. Why do we lose stuff, man? Why do we lose it? It's alright though. Um, lower their suspicion just a little bit, but that's okay. We're supplementing Hutik's ranks. Disrupt communications, which probably would be very good, because right now, um, we're actually losing on the defense. At least our allies are. We're not. And we're just kind of hanging out. So, uh, disrupt bombing runs. Uh, here you go. Mm, there you go. Cool. And right now we're doing laying the groundwork, which we did end with yesterday. I think I did read Token Troops. So if you want to read this again, please go right ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this when we get it done. So, But I, I, at this point, we're, for suspicion, we're doing quite okay. So that'll be okay. Ooh. Some people will die, but that's okay. Air left the men, they're not very suspicious, but Nation Building 101. To make Angola plan a reality, Angola had to be stabilized, and the logistics for a new beginning needed to be set up before any of the components were laid down. <clears throat> there was, of course, a matter of war, the matter of the war. Any material used for anything other than the war effort would be scrutinized by the other Reichskommissariats, and the German Civil War would not last forever. Should the victor intervene in the Boston War, then there would be a double the scrutiny, and anything they did would need to... Uh, need to be covered up and fast. Schenk froze his brow. He knew some men who could be trusted to handle this more sensitive parts of the plan. And how suspicious would Mueller get? He would mostly be distracted by the war, but the Africa Shield would permit if Mueller access to Sufis Africa. If he realized that supplies were used to merely stabilize Angola, he might get suspicious that we aren't trying our best to win the war. If too many resources were reallocated too quickly, Mueller would no doubt act on his suspicions and put an end to Schenk's plan for good, conversely. If too few resources were allocated, then a liberated Angola would crumble when the Germans or even the Americans decided to assert themselves. We can't afford to rouse suspicion now. Spend at least the amount of possible on Angola's foundation. It'll save us money, but we'll leave Angola weak. They have grain work for a stable state. Invest a decent amount into them. Cost us money, but be more stable, and they'll be ready through a great sacrifice. We will invest as much as we need to ensure Angola stands on its own two feet. And we can lower the suspicion, so. There you go. You can have that, too. Um, at this point, um, I want our guys to get beaten up, so I'm actually going to retreat. Full retreat up to, like, here. And we've already grounded our planes to a halt, so they're not even moving anyway, so. 
No one in, no one out, so all right. Contact CIA, friends in the, in our, in their Air Force would not be bad either. What does this one do? First impressions, future cabinet. A building up the nation. Let's do it, friends in the Air Force. Our preliminary talks have been positive so far, and the embedded CIA agents have sent us word to our superiors to officially begin preparations for any future cooperation. With their help, and especially the USA Air Force uh, help, we can deal blow after crippling blow to our former comrades and our undeclared enemies. This Faustian bog has thrust us into an arena like none we've ever faced. A tournament within the shadows. Those nebulous spectators cheer roaringly against us, no matter. We face worse than darkness within our consciousness for far longer than they. The monsters our minds have conjured against our sanity is far out anything Hutig and Mulewa array against us. Very good. Um, not very suspicious, not very suspicious is very good. Get down the depth. Crawling along the edge of a straight razor. Warrant officer Hugh Thompson gazed upon at the devastation below him as his chopper was flung into the drifting smoke above the village. Instantly, he felt in his gut that something wasn't right. They had been sent to reinforce the minority there, but this was meant to be a simple reconnaissance mission. The mud was littered with corpses, children, men, women, old men. They didn't seem to be of any draft age or with any of his weapons. Thompson ordered the helicopter to land in the center of this village, where could, he could see a few Americans milling about. He disembarked, and as he approached the nearest private, he was startled by an African woman stumbling from a nearby hut, naked, groaning, blood running down her legs. A shot rang out. Her head blew apart in a fountain of brain matter and skull fragments. The woman's body slammed into the dirt of in a pool of gore. A man came out from the hut, stepping over the corpses, one hand holding his pistol and the other uh, do, un, doing up his zipper. Who's in charge? She demanded Thompson. That be me, said the soldier, unaffected. Name's Kali. You are relief? Thompson stared at him in horror as an and Philodonta shots rang out behind him at the other end of the village. He just got into Callie's unshaken face. Just what the heck is going on here, Lieutenant? Just following orders, replied Callie, giving these savages a taste of American firepower. But these are unarmed civilians, human beings, sir. More shots. Thompson winced. Callie lit a cigarette. Look, buddy, this is my show. I'm in charge here. If you ain't interested in doing your darn job, why didn't you F off back to your chopper and mind your own business? Thompson carefully glanced around. Callie's men were staring at him, slowly moving towards him from the side, surrounding him. You ain't heard the last of this, he snarled impotently as he stepped back into the helicopter. Raising over the village, he saw a group of soldiers push a handful of girls and old men into a ditch and open fire. Thompson desperately tried to raise a colonel on the radio, receiving only static. Meanwhile, he could do nothing but watch the orgy of killing unfold below him, helpless to stop it. Someday, this war is going to end. Well, someday. They're actually doing okay. They're not even cut off over here, which is really weird, because this, this tile, I don't like this tile. It's a super, super long tile, but you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, we're cutting down the debt, so... We're helping him build Angola, totally helping out for the war effort, and, uh, yeah, not bad. All right, so not very suspicious Afrikaner airlift. All right, token troops will raise their suspicion a little bit, which is okay to do for now. Uh, they're actually sort of winning here, which is not good. Uh, they're losing over there, so as you can see, like, we're not doing anything. Oh, the Iberians showed up, too. Oh, good for the Iberians. Good for them. Nice. All right, so suspicious. Let's lower both of theirs a little bit, or a bunch. Too a little bit, and I guess who took his next? We have no manpower, so you can have that too. Nice, not bad, my friends, not bad. Let's go ahead and grab some of this. We want more max factories and get some more output because we love output, right? Yes, we do. Followed up with what? The future cabinet. No one in, but no one out. As it is, only air uh, plane routines consistently ensure city supply of new men and equipment for the shield frontline troops. As expected, so. Most such traffic passes through our airports. Should anything happen to them, even the high mech could only relieve them through insufficient, easily targetable routes. By setting reports of enemy spies infiltrating the armed forces through civilian flights, we can shut down all airports in Sudwest Africa and effectively can see the continent skies to the OFN. Oh, the irony. Fry elected in Chile. Okay. Gods of the North, of course. Mobilization speed goes down really a whole lot. Keep doing that for now. We're not going to keep down military spending because I still want to get more output, but that's okay for now. Minus 200 billion is pretty nice. Oh, look at this. Oh, can we do this again? Oh! Uh oh! Germany reunited. Oh, I didn't realize that. Bormann. Oh boy, that's not good. Um, well, close out of that. Bormann won. That is really not bueno. Um, they're not very suspicious, so we could probably raise it up a little bit more. By a lot. I don't want to do it by a lot, though, but a little bit is okay. A little bit is definitely okay. Because now they're both somewhat suspicious, but there you go. Spend some command power. That is good. Good. We're, we're okay for now. They're losing here, which is good. They're winning on, over here, which is unfortunate. And we're just kind of hanging out. Um, honestly, I don't want to deal with this. Um, here. Hooty. There you go. We like to keep our own supplies here. That's not too bad. So they can deal with the resistance. We don't have to. Because we're out of infantry equipment already. Um, can we actually... How many other states do we... 
occupy. We don't occupy anything, really. Really? Do we? Up here, too? Um, honestly, yeah. Yeah, you guys can have it. I mean, they might have factories there, maybe, but... It's not really worth keeping for us. Not very suspicious, not very suspicious. Very good. No one in, but no one out. Oh, boy. Friends in the Air Force, first impressions. Our ex saw Shank sat in silence. The Savannah, he did little to break the ice that encased his anxious heart. He sat staring at the phone in front of him, waiting for the courage to pick up this earpiece and dial the number he'd been given. All the other matters of his office, bar the most urgent, had been delegated to his subordinates. The details were prearranged by a trusted intelligence officer. All he had to do was make sure to make the darn call. Battling his nerves, Shank swiftly dialed the number into the telephone as if he were a race against his own thoughts. The line connected. Hello, is this the Southwest African Gulf Oil and Aviation Company? Shank said, his voice trembling. Yeah, this is Herr Shank. We can go straight to the point. Hello, Herr Shank, answered a voice. After a long silence, soothing Shank's anxieties. I am pleased to hear that you have decided to contact us. Shank realized at this moment that he had committed he had committed to something from which he could not turn back. I will put things simply. I wish to establish a working arrangement between our two organizations. Given time, where people could become mutual benefactors. Herr Shank, your proposal is well received. This will have to be discussed with the board. We will be in touch. As the man hung up, Shank wondered if it at all had worked. Let's see what they have to say. Oh, Germany wants to send a division. Nah, we're okay. Very good. Germany comes to our aid. Look at that. Uh, the solemn thoughts of war and its toil trail behind the troops who have been stationed on base, preparing for the arrival of the new divisions being shipped in. Everywhere you look, men were clearing the way out of, out of vehicle de depots, worn out armored personnel carriers and tanks, treaded down the makeshift roads set up within the base, and officers berated their subordinates for not pushing cargo out of the way fast enough for the incoming soldiers meant to help and reinforce and strengthen the border against the South Africans. All the while, the Rex Commissar looked onwards, bearing the heat of the ever-burning African sun. As Neria Zephyr grifted the uh, Valhalla served the Germans that day, blessings were, after all, slim to begin in this war. Just earlier this week, the surrounding compound has been awoken from the emergency broadcast transmissions from the Gross Germanisches Reich itself. Through the static of the transmissions, they managed to get several key notifications, including U.S. entering South Africa, Reich, reinforcements, victory, not lost. The base had entered a feverish excitement in knowing that their savior, the Fatherland, has provided so plentifully past the hordes that the African continent managed to generate seemingly every day. The lack of undrenched uniform, the constant wear and tear upon both equipment and their blood, finally the men would be able to enjoy a new bolstering of men to fight shoulder to shoulder in the endless savannas of this accursed continent. Admittedly, there was a continued talk of what could happen out there on the front lines with the Americans lining up to fight as well, but none could surpass the GGR. As the days had finally arrived and the distant sounds of trucks from other German machines of war poured into the base's surrounding air, the men had finally finished their preparations for all the reinforcements that were due to arrive. Siegheil. Cool. Great. We don't need that. Death from above. His orders would be to bomb anything that moved. It was quiet in the cockpit, and consconched in his insectoid helmet, opaque black plates covering his eyes and a proboscoid hose pumping oxygen into his lungs. The pilot could only hear the humming of his engine and the gentle susurration of voices on the radio. Um, I think I've read this one before. So if you'd like to read it again, please go right ahead, but... Can the bombs heal our souls and instead of spirits free? Yeah, I've definitely read that one. It's weird that we got that one again. Okay, whatever. Um, let's do build up the nation. How can we truly atone for our sins if we only change the heck which Angola's people suffer? Freedom is built a mere word if it isn't backed by its advantages, by strengthening the civilian economy and teaching some of the natives how to properly direct a company. We can cultivate the foundations of a middle class capable of carrying the Angolan people's demand for goods and services. We're doing all this so that they can be happy. This is all we care for. We can't be happy if they aren't, such is our cause, yet such is also our path to salvation. Ah, the volunteers are gone. Very good. Not very suspicious. Great. I want to get to this one. Oh, we have some manpower. Look at that. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. We gotta save that for later. Anyways, um, we can't do the markets because we don't PP. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, they guys are losing, huh? Oh, they're losing. Oh no! Someone help them. I'm just waiting for the next focus to get done, just so that we can get some stuff in here too. Very high German displeasure. Well, can we please you, Germany? We'd love to please you. Please let us please you. Thirty-five day focus, huh? Oh, there they go. Eight. Well, we're still working on it. Keep going down that deck, guys. That's more important than winning the war. Just saying. Oh. Oh, we have a deficit. We still have a deficit. Oh, that sucks. Oh, you cut off another division. That's so bad. Not very suspicious, huh? Does that do nothing? There we go. There you go. Alright, well, um, a cleared conscience. Under the table deals. 
Withdraw the guard. Clear out the villages. Uh, let's do under the table deals. Of course, our bargains come with a price tag. If the CIA wants our help, they must provide an action that they will help us in turn. All we do is for the people of this devastated land, and it is only proper that they remember this as well. Hence, we presented them with a series of deals that they are masters, uh, must abide in exchange for both their Im information and conveniences. These include minimizing civilian casualties, conducting relief operations in hinterland villages within our borders, and both guaranteeing Angola's independence and providing the newborn country with generous development programs and loans. <clears throat> Should the Americana uphold the end of the bargain, the Angola is assured to be a freer, happier future than what it currently possesses. Our patience for our broken promises are low. Should Washington break ours, then our worthless lives will be drag will drag the duplicitous fools to our shallow graves. Oh, did they actually reinforce here? Yeah, they did a little bit. That's nice. Building up being hot. Shanks shared the industrial blueprints, the first of many to ensure the future of a new Angola. Ideally, what the industrial base Angola would have to be used to further industrialize to build the backbone of a new Angolan economy. Unfortunately, there was a problem of the war. The military factories were busy churning out guns, planes, ammo, and everything else for the war effort. Civilian industries were at capacity trying to maintain the facades of normalcy or normality, on top of repairing the infrastructure damage caused by either American bombers or insurgent bombings in the countryside. There, of course, were no easy solutions, Shank mused. <clears throat> The factories had to supply the war to keep the Americans from overrunning Angola, but without a post-war industry capable of supplying the natives in their post-war struggle for freedom, the Angolan plan would be doomed from the start. Perhaps there was a compromise that could be benefit both of Schenck's objectives while risking failure at both. Mm, there you go. There you go. Um, put very little work into it. Uh, develop somewhat, and this one. Raise Mueller's suspicion by a lot. Let's give it some time here. Oh, nope. I got one in. Alright, so we gotta help lower stuff then. Let's lower this a little bit more. Under the table deals, followed up with what? Cut our losses? New. No. The talk of the Americans broken down. Uh, the future cabinet. Let's do with uh, functioning utilities. For decades, the people of Angola have lived in abject poverty due to our neglect. It is our duty to compensate them for the suffering. Hence, we shall ensure that a free Angola has at least basic utilities, such as water or electricity, available for all its peoples. Some of them we can justify as part of addressing war's exigencies, like pandemics and production quotas, but for the most part, we can only draw both large sums of money and the government's suspicions to afford these expensive programs. Nice. Oh, good. Here. Under the table deals. Off the rocket, the first meeting. Uh, Rex Tomasashenko was, to all outward appearances, a self-assured, confident war hero. In his private office, however, he leaned over his desk relentlessly, or restlessly, tapping his finger in cold sweat running down his face, staring at the phone. Soon the appointed hour would arrive. A ring cut short as Shank lifted the receiver, only to drop it with a grunt. I don't care, he said. Handle it however you want. His anxiety coated his hands with perspiration. Where were they? He looked at his watch just past six. Outing, hello? Shank said, his voice barely containing his excitement. Is this the Southwest African Gulf Oil Company? A man's voice answered him, the American accent on his German palpable enough to throw Shank off. Yes, is this a house, Shank? This is what the matter we discussed yesterday. If not, could you redirect me to him? Yes, this is Shank. Perfect. This is Lansdale. Shall we continue our talks we held yesterday? Regarding our policy of his voice straight away, closer cooperation. The fear would kill Shank for this, but he had no other choice. Yes, what would you like to talk about? What is the Rex Commissar planning to do? He's got big plans. Actually, without boosting it up, do we actually... We still have a deficit, so... We could actually cut it, lose lose political power, and not be able to build anymore, but we're going to keep spending. That's fine. And, okay. Uh, giving them a fighting chance. The, when the moment comes for the insurrection to start, the natives will need to be able to defend themselves against certain retaliation from the other Rex Commissariats in order to give them a chance to resist until the Africa Shield collapses so we can smuggle some weapons to them much better than what they have now. Mostly relics from the last war are ransacked from old colonial armories and, each selected, and teach selected members from the resistance how to correctly employ them. In turn, they will train the rest of the opposition forces wherever they find them. However, they need to be extremely cautious. The fact that the resistance is now equipped with military-grade weapons won't pass unobserved, and it'll soon be known that we have been supplying them. So, still, we are willing to take the chance. It's now or never, of course. A firm no. Rex Kumasal Shank sat down in his dimly lit office with nothing but a single lamp to stave off the darkness of the night. He would rather collapse upon his bed and forget the woes of the world, but there was yet work to be done, and this particular task had to be finished. Again, he stared at the phone which sat menacingly upon his desk. Cold sweat covered his body. He had been given express orders for no one to disturb him. Though few would at such an hour, he had to be certain that no one would overhear. Shank took one final breath and dialed. A familiar voice filled his ear. Has Shank had spoke? How good to hear from you again, and finished with a chilling, deceptive kindness. Well, Shank replied, I'd wish to inquire on the matter of our partnership. Has... 
Has the board come to a decision? He finished with a nervous swallow. Well, ah, Heshank, I'm afraid that the board has convened and decided that your proposed venture is unfitting for the company. We apologize and hope that you understand our decision, the voice said brightly. Yes, of course, thank you, Shank said. As the telephone slipped from his grip, the receiver dangled inches from the floor as Shank slouched into a seat, lost to hopeless despair. We are on our own. Oh, boy. Mm. We do both. We do all those. That's fine. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, that's not really good. That's really bad, actually. Oh, uh, the quality of life. Africa, as you know, is criminally underdeveloped. Generations of European colonizers never actually took much stock in helping the people survive, yet alone develop. As Shang takes stock of the economic situation in Angola, he is reminded again that Africa was never prioritized for Germanization, being little more than a resource extraction scheme for Germania. But for the Angolan plan to succeed, that would have, to, of course, to change. We could invest generously into improving the living standard, or standard of living, committing ourselves to social development to the point that even the poorest Angolan will know the wonders of modern pl plumbing, but it will make Mueller suspicious as we develop more of these raw materials for non-military purposes. These plans are, of course, expensive, both in terms of resources and the political cost of getting Central Africa to look the other way. Needless to say, it was a bad time to be diverting wartime necessities for civilian utilities. Uh, shank, shank, of course. Glanced inside. Any major infrastructure push would no doubt raise suspicions from Mueller, yet at the same time he had to give the natives something to fight for, a semblance of prosperity and a head start for the natives after so many years of oppression. That in the hope of minimizing the crushing regret that he did not do everything possible when this was over. Uh, let's see, building utilities while war at our doorstep is difficult. Divert what resources we can, appropriate construction equipment, and funds from the war effort. It's fine. I'll be okay with it. And airlift the men, that'll be good. Nice botched bombing runs. Well, we're probably not going to do that. Oh, Ben has been elected. Hopefully we don't... Oh, actually... Oh, we still see down here. Now if you're suspicious, someone's suspicious. That's fine. Give them a fighting chance and cut our losses. For the most part, they may have kind of refused to accept the deals we offered them. We should have expected that they would only try to replace German domination with their own, still. We need their help, but so we'll have to cooperate with the CIA, but nothing prevents us from preparing the ground so that the resistance is ready to fight for their freedom, even against their American liberators. By sending enough equipment to the opposition, and leaking enough information about several CIA agents to weaken their efforts just enough, we can cut our losses and prepare Angola for freedom, heedless of any who call themselves its master. Nice. Oh, guys, please don't win. Give them a fighting chance. The art of preparing for war. Uh, let's go and do some of this stuff first. Oh, this stuff. Cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, the art. Whenever Shank read the reports, uh, glancing over the estimated militia strength, he couldn't help but notice that his light hand actually made him more complacent in their bid for freedom. It would be an overstatement to say that they were com competent fighters and for their own good, this could not continue. Shank dusted off the plans to dispatch some of the garrisons to remote villages, not as a garrison, but as a navy nativizing training force, quietly preparing them for the day they would stand alone. Perhaps they would not have the most advanced weapons, but they would not need them if he was training them right. They would try fight dirty, with guerrilla tactics and unconventional strategies bleeding their many enemies dry whenever, wherever there would be American or German. Those would not go unnoticed, of course. Hiltigan in particular would be more than annoyed, his suspicions would be piqued. If the men were not ferried towards the front line, he might question what exactly is so pressing on the Sudwest African home front to demand so many troops. Shank shuddered. For a moment, he wondered if Hutig already knew what was going on in these rooms from some rat or erstwhile spy. But now Hutig had his hands full of the war, but Shank knew he couldn't push his luck. The madman could make a move before the war was over, and the failure of Shank's plans would leave Angola in a worse place than when he arrived. Give them scraps, split the weapons, if an Angolan soldier must be a German's equal. He will have to be. Please don't win. Oh, good, you're losing. Good, good job, guys. You're losing. Airlift Mueller's men? Might as well. The collapse of the underground state unity. Inconceivable. Cool. Cut our losses and then... Um, withdrawing the guard. Currently, our garrison keeps order in the Angolan cities and villages with obvious consequences by withdrawing all guard units and sending them to the front. With excuse of the necessities of the war, we can start employing native guards. Of course, they won't know the reason for their appointment, which means they'll still be hostile to us. To address this issue, we'll probably have to increase our salaries to buy their loyalty for the time being. Run it out, pay him off. Just, just occasionally do a bombing run, you know. Good, the communists reunified those people. All right, all right. Comprehensive examinations. Nice. Oh, we actually have slight amounts. Um, you know, do that too, why not? No! 
Oh, I thought they were one. All Afrikaner officers arrived. Major Fisher slipped, sipped his brandy carefully as we watched a train pull into the station. It was neat, clean, and spotlessly painted. All the signs of an African delivery. It stuck out like a sore thumb among the general disorder of the rest of the situation in the station. Fisher took a look at himself. His uniform was rumpled and stained with a few rips here and there. Unfortunate, but he hadn't had the time to get them fixed in the weeks. The doors of the trains opened and out stepped a man that Fisher knew would make his life heck. A Norse Afrikanische SS man, completely dressed in a spotless dress uniform. He had even brought the hat. Disdainfully, the man observed the station as he walked towards Fisher. Fisher, suddenly realizing something, ran his head over his face. He had forgotten to shave. SS man stopped. Do you know where uh, Major Fisher is, soldier? He asked. You're looking at him, Fisher replied. And you're up, Major, the man side. Uh, the, my, I and my men are here to help your division with tactics and strategy. Hopefully it won't be too hard, though everything I've seen so far suggests that this is going to be difficult. Where's your commander? Fisher held in a sigh of his own. This is going to be painful. Follow me. Perhaps we'll start off with the unit discipline, the SS man said, and the two set off into the streets. Not a good start. I have some planes, guys. I have some planes. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Please don't win. Please. Oh, good. You lost it. You lost it there. Oh. Oh, don't cut him off. Please don't cut him off. For the love of God. Come on. Did, did they actually lose? Oh, good. They, they lost. That's so weird. Tr trying to lose a war, man. Don't lose. Oh, uh, please tell me they have a port. Please tell me they have a port somewhere here. How do they not have a port somewhere here? Oh, come on. you got to get down here. you got to get down here. Oh, please. Please, please. For the love of God. Um, after that, we shall be doing... Clear out the village. The scattered villages of the Angolan inland are filled with people ready to fight for their freedom. Even better, they are now entirely outside any sort of control from the garrison, meaning that no one will notice a few hundred of young men suddenly disappearing into the forests. These fires will form the bulwark of the future army of Angola and will have to hold the line against the other German troops in Africa. Re relying on them might seem cruel, as so many of them will die, but we live in difficult times, and a free Angola won't be able to resist without brave men willing to sacrifice their lives for it. Okay, they got back. Did they? Oh, oh crap, they Cape Town. Oh crap, that's not good. Uh, if you want to read about this, please go ahead, but... Actually, that's actually good for these guys, technically, because they get supplies back. So it's actually really good for them. Nope. Withdrawing the guard, as Shank looks out of the last security reports, he ponders his next move. His plans are moving quickly towards completion. Now all they need to do is allow the independence movements to take control of the territory in his final push, but for that, they need time and space to gather the men. <clears throat> and roads and factories to move and supply them. To address the fundamental issue, his mind already has a solution. He will order the garrison to stop protecting the villages from the rebels, and will stop the patrols that regularly keep vigil over the roads and highways this way. The rebels will slowly take over and extend their control over Angola. As soon as that happens, more and more will join the cause of the freedom fighters, further strengthening their cause, of course. However, this option is not free from risk. The other Rex commissars will surely notice that the empty garrisons and unguarded roads, and this will greatly increase their suspicions about our conduct. If he truly wishes to make his move, he'll need to be prepared for anything. Even No, especially for the worst. The choices are straightforward. Move fast and carefully, or try to find a balance between the two. All center on a daily balance. A stronger and goal, or a less suspicious uprising. Time to decide. Low suspicion. Slow withdrawal. Redeploy all men to the front line, effective immediately. That's really bad for these guys. On that, these guys got actually a lot of supplies, which is good. It's good to see. The future cabinet. As we lay the Angolan's futures, uh, future groundwork, we must select those who would both work, uh, have the right credentials to lead it, and the outlook we believe best serves it. On the one hand, a young nation is a strong, guiding hand to protect it and its people from aspiring warlords and dictators. On the other, such people could be very well become dictators themselves, and perhaps more moderate politicians in favor of strong checks and balances and constitutional rule can better deliver any than any absolute decree could ever could. We can't afford to make a mistake at this juncture, so our vindication is tied to the trajectory Angola's first leaders shall follow. Fanning the embers, of course. Oh boy, this is looking. This is a mess. This is. Oh, he actually encircled some. Two divisions. Nice job, guys. A shank sat at his desk, drafting his last orders as Rex Commissar. He needed to write out the orders for the soldiers deployed in the villages for their sake as much as it was for the natives. Once the partisans could run unfettered, the troops would need a head start to escape with their lives, having been ordered to withdraw from their posts. 
He wondered at the absurdity of the situation. His treason relied on his soldiers' loyalty so that both the colonizer and colonized would escape their, with their lives. It was such that a lumber was supposed to make him feel better, did it? It was one more thing to hide from the Mueller, who would surely start asking questions when faced with such disorganized orders. There wasn't much left to do now. Most of the preparations for the Angolan plan were finished, and Shank could just tell his men to pull out of the villages immediately. Mueller and Hutu could go to heck for all he cared, but with a bit of luck, by the time they came knocking, he'd be soaring towards a place where he could retire in peace. Uh, then again, why risk it before the end? If there was ever a screw-up, a leak, then it would be all for nothing. He'd probably be able to escape, but the plan would fall. Slowly and almost imperceivably. Be selected by the pull-up. Let's get the men out now. The plan cannot wait. Sounds good to us. It's not much, but it's honest debt. Repayment. Free political prisoners once we expend more on our civilian spending, of course. At present, dozens of Angolan freedom fighters' leaders labor in our prisons and camps without any opportunity to assist our country's liberation. Our heart tells us to free everyone to end the torment, but we must exercise common sense at this juncture. We can ha pardon a handful of this ex for this excuse or that, or our hand wave of prison break is a freak occurrence. But freeing everyone at once will draw heavy criticism and suspicion around us, especially from that already suspicious dude Hutuk. Still, he has. Has Hutuk ever trusted anyone in his life? The cabinet of the future. Bl bluntly, most parts of the Angolan plan were logistical in nature, dangerous to be sure, but mundane at heart. But the questions of good government, or the simple yet impossible questions, these were the stuff of dreams and lofty ideals which Shank had lost years ago. A strong man or a strong institutions, unity or liberty. Shank's decision tonight could set the precedent for all other leaders in Africa to follow, but the natives will not have the luxury of the Americans two centuries ago. Two oceans, few enemies, and endless time to discuss and debate over the new countrymen. A weary man who desired redemption and absolution, who wished to no longer see a country bound up in chains of servitude would have to do. It would be possible to call a meeting of the dis dissidents to draft a constitution, but it would take the considerable misdirection and consume it just to hide the meetings. Alternatively, Shank's men could do the majority of the work while bringing, briefing some hardy ex-revolutionaries in their cells, telling them to stick to the plans. It was not the most ideal solution, but better than gambling too much and losing it all. Shank reached out for the folder of Harden from captivity with the wills of steel, and goal will be led by an authoritarian leader after independence, or the dreamers awoken at last carrying the torch of freedom. Yeah. Mm, we could probably do this one too. No, we'll do both. Why not? Screw it. Ah, the airlift is good. It's done. Good, 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 good. And fake the papers. Hundreds of freedom fighters from the Cameroon National State and other parts of Africa are merely waiting for the chance to help Angola earn its freedom. By faking diplomatic passports and travel visas, we can bring these well-trained men to suit vessel Africa without arousing suspicion. They can easily blend in with the natives once they are inside. From there, they can begin training the resistance movement for the inevitable insurrection. Everything toward the light is falling smoothly into place. Truly, the Reich's hubris will be its downfall. All right, so lift them, some, send some more planes. We'll do all this just just in case. Uh, we're winning for the most part over here. Hey, they're coming back. They can become very strong again, which is very nice. Why is their GDP, GDP dropping though? I thought it was 5.4 billion. Eh, maybe I'm not reading it right. Building a trust, de a brain trust. Shank had believed that deep down in the heart of all men burned the desire to be free, but in his experience, many were content to plow the fields to suffer servitude in exchange for peace. That made those un was willing to speak out for freedom all the bolder, landing them a place in the fold of Shank's hands and in his prisons. The question was how many should be released to ensure a strong Angola. Any option would take taken would need to be need to account for how much suspicion it would raise from Hutting. There would be need they would there would need to be new names in the prison roles, new identities for the released prisoners, but time was of the essence. The more prisoners that would be free, the more difficult it would become to release them all unnoticed. Some would have to be, of course, released, no matter the cost. They had essential skills and education that would be vital to the new government. Others weren't essential, but would undoubtedly be useful. Then there were the craziest idea of them all. Just free them all. You know, just free them all. It would, Shank reflected, save him the burden of choosing who to free, and it would free him of the guilt of knowing that in him, choosing to free some, he would condemn others to waste away for longer. After milling it over, Shank thought it would be best to free the only most essential, free all those who would benefit a new Angola, or free them all and have one last thing on their conscience. Shank won't mind. Or Hutu won't mind. Shank loves it. And our guys are winning, so. They're both not very suspicious. And search the camps. While the political prisoners are kept uh, in tightly sur surveilled facilities and prisons, the rest of the natives lie in concentration camps without the proper equipment and personnel to keep a complete tally. Making a few hundred natives disappear will be easy, and will be certainly select those who can best contribute to the incoming fight. It tempts uh, as so to simply free them all, to let loose the camp gates and begin making amends for the injustices they have borne, but we cannot, not now. We must endure suffering, both ours and theirs, to ensure Angola has some hope of seizing its freedom. Let us carry on for their sakes. Without, without us doing anything, they're doing okay. The art of deceit, of course. 
Uh, Dr. Savimbi drove to the Rex Commissar's office, summoned for a checkup. It was a flu, he said, that it could be contagious, hence the house call. With his doctor's code and the Rex Commissar's invitation in hand, he passed through security with it without issue. When he entered Shank's office, Dr. Savimbi promptly removed his doctor's coat. There was no flu here, only a table littered with identical satchel bags containing matching manila envelopes. As soon as you authorize this operation, these satchels will go out to every single freedom fighter we know of, Shank said. If you're Ben, follow your instructions, then we've... Then these forged papers will get your fighters through any checkpoint in the Rex Commissariats as they prepare for the uprising. They are made with the same paper and methods used for all official document documentations and documents. Savimbi held one up to the light to see the Rex Adler shining through and nodded in approval. Hutig will be suspicious, even if these documents seem real, given the number of people crossing the borders. It would not be a problem to hand all of the satchels out, but if you wanted to minimize suspicion, we have a few drop-off points that would be safer, even if there are restricts the uprising. Just a few of your, to your best man, we can't handle any more. Prioritize locations that have less scrutiny, and let's raise up some real hack. Send them all out. And they love it. Um, disrupt communications. There you go. That's fine. Barely making any money, but that's okay. And then, request an extradition treaty. Also, Africa had quite, uh, collected quite a few no members of the Angolan resistance during these years, from both external cells operating in its borders and runaways taking advantage of our inability to house them all in our camps. And the guys are preparing several new concentration camps modeled after his own. We can get them and their skills back by signing an extradition treaty with Utig. The paranoid dude will surely preen like a peacock, thinking we have finally understood the superiority of his ways, and we will be slightly less sorry for proving him wrong. On the off chance, he'll agree handing over his precious slaves to us, he'll soon disappear into the darkness, and reunite with long-lost brothers the moment they step one foot into our camps, of course. In an instant letter, Dear Reich, uh, Commissar Hutig, In light of our recent alliance and collaboration, I thought it would be best to offer some assistance with regards to your prisoner problem. We have heard that you have jailed and imprisoned the Unita bandits, who have made numerous raids into your territory. Similarly, they have been a thorn in our side as well, and we have our own fair share of experience in rehabilitating these individuals to make sure that they will not attempt such brazen acts of chaos in the future. I am sure that these subhumans have received their due punishment under your vigilant administration, even as your valiant troops push towards victory. We offer to take over custody of over some of these troublemakers so that you may focus your full attention on the war effort under New Alliance. Attached to this letter are the formalities concerning the proposed trans prisoner transfer. Together, we shall run the Americans into the sea and claim South Africa for the Reich and the Africa Shield. Yours, Rex Commissar Wolfgang Schenk. Mm, there we go. A small prisoner exchange. We're going to go all the way. Attach an aggressive extradition treaty. Somewhat suspicious? That is okay. Waiting in the shadows. The groundwork for Angola's government and armed forces has now been laid. The erstwhile opposition has been un united, and the freedom fighters we have hosted numerous, well armed and well trained. Now we wait in the shadows as the rest of the puzzle completes itself. We shall commence the insurrection once everyone has taken their proper places. A few steps more, and we will be free. Or at least say we will be free. History will be kind to us, but it's time to take our bow. Well, this doesn't this go poorly for us, because I feel like it could probably go very, very poorly for us if we're found out too early. Right under his nose. <clears throat> the squeak of the rattle of the office's aging dockwood floors never ceased to irritate Shank. One of the many experience expenses his soul carries is a penance for his actions. This annoyance manifested itself again as his secretary sat behind his desk, donning a die-hard national socialist fierce demeanor. A cursory examination of this year's figures, Herr Shank hemmed the young man, clearly shows Ost Africa's exponential in economic growth. Soon West Africa's own numbers languish pitifully in comparison. What will the mongrels say of our performance? They will think us weak, will they not? Schenk had low tolerance for bureaucrats and con artists. Already the brat's insults neared Schenk to his limit, and the civilian and military sector he bit. Keeping his cool was a risky exercise in restraint. Slip once, and his cover will all be blown. The numbers are fine, yes? Right. But it's fully to assume we need or deserve marginal growth. Also, Africa's flush with both resources and money. No doubt because of the superior administration. If we desire to maintain our supremacy over the natives, says Schenk, then advise approaching Hutik with an agreement. He will understand, I'm sure. Shank continued to pace around his office. Oh, if only this kid knew Africa's realities. That his plan, that uh, weighed on the willingness to cut his throat's throat that day or not, whether it was for the glory of the Reich or whatever nonsense they could come up with. Hutig was a madman, and the Nazis were cruel, sick monsters, to be sure. But Shank knew failure was certain if he failed to disguise his true beliefs, and th his failure meant Africa's doom at the hands of all Africa's leading sociopath. Request a treaty. We really don't have a lot of money to spend here. Oh, boy. Yeah, GDP keeps going down. What's going on? Why does GDP keep... Keep going down, man. So many expenditures. 
We agreed to inform you of Wolfgang Schenk bathed in the sun's warmth as he looked through the window at what he and his colleagues had done what was once a land of untamed beauty. He recalled the industrial and slave-driven knife that had been plunged deep into its hot and soul, tearing it asunder. All of it, every last minute he could be tied back to Hans Hutig, Siegfried Müller, and Wolfgang Schenk himself. His eyes burned tears of shame, tears he must not let anyone see, of course. Well, let's do that one, because we can. And... Don't you. A door slammed, and Nazi's jackboot marched closer, turning he saw a young, disciplined man with a manila folder saying, From Rex Commissar Ost Africa, sir. Shank tore the folder from the kid's hand, disturbed at the secretary's lack of decency. Irritation gave way to the despair as he read Hutig's response. Rex Commissar at Ost Africa cannot bring itself to lend aid towards foreign states of seeming strength, and must refuse a request for additional resources to be delivered to. Shank's eyes wandered off. What details were there to speak of? The wound in Shank's Wolf, uh, Wolfgang Shank's hot continued to pry open, as a demon which was rested in his very soul continued to pour out, with sins of the past, present, and future ra rallying in his mind. Hans Hutig, all too suspicious and all too sus despicable, to even lend a thought of providing aid to other Rex Commissariats. And now the evil dude didn't even fold in this one chance to allow for a centimeter of success for Shank. As the sorrows ate away at the Rex Commissar, he nearly forgot uh, the of the young man standing there, iron-willed, and the spitting image of a man like Hans Utig. Get the F out, uh, Shank said, providing a dosage of fear with the gravity of Shank's tone as he hurried about and marched out. Bad word. A clear conscience, though. We saw it each other's faces. We saw it on poor Wolfgang. We felt it at ourselves. We did not hope for a few of being proven wrong, but the Rex Commissariat's, uh... Ooh, well, look at all that stuff. Uh... Eye bags have fled just as we can now sleep without feeling thorny vines strangling our hearts and souls. How long has it been since we have ha had last felt true peace? We have done what we could, and now we enter our plan's final stage. With a clear conscience and a renewed willingness to lay our very souls on the line, never mind the deaths we risk for the Angolan people's freedom, or the shallow ditches that mark our failures. We are at peace now, and that is what matters the most. Contact the CIA. Oh, so this has to go be successful. That sucks. In their pocket. Spy Haven. Well, we were ready to go and help them and do this stuff, but you know what? The CIA said, nah, not today. Someone suspicious? Alright. That's fine with us. And then history will be kind to us. Oh, Slio, esteemed muse of the ancient chroniclers, please hear our plea. Oh, if you want to do that again, please go ahead. For decades we have strived to repent for the past, uh, for our past sins. Fought monsters of body, both mind, no, uh, body and mind, no man should ever face. We have paid the somber price a thousandfold. We embittered men ask a recompense. Only reprieve for the weary souls encased in our prison like husks. Clear our names of their past transgressions, free our minds from the burdens of regrets, and let the world assign our deeds to unfortunate souls who have given our many. A Alls, to whom they have wronged, rather than the unrepentable criminals we had become. O oh, muse of history, bless us with a kindness we ourselves will never grant. Oh, these guys are getting—it's getting worse for our guys now. Holy crap! Oh, the, that's because the Germans are here. Oh crap! Don't lose it! Don't lose it! Please don't lose it! Come on! Come on! Come on, man! Uh, Overcommando Africa, from the Rex uh, headquarters. The High Command of the Armed Forces in Africa announces, Today, the Reich in Africa finds itself as an impasse. No doubt many of you have already heard of the bedlam that engulfs the mother country as we speak. What is a regrettable occurrence, the considerable leeway with which Germania has bestowed with her, upon her Reich's commissariats, and the Dark Continent has prevented the disorder there from causing similar discord here? We are still sufficient in resources, incapable in function, and will remain so until the next fear assumes power, nevertheless. It has also invited problems of our own. Our armies, navies, and air forces rely upon Germany to supply with them, with instructions and scope personnel. With the current crisis, acquiring either from conventional sources is an impossibility in effect. All three direct commissariats in mainland Africa are now independent, with the discohesion that entails. This must be rectified post haste. Henceforth, effective today, the separate commands of Reich's Commissariat Ost Africa, Central Africa, and Sudwest Africa shall be temporarily subsumed into Oberkommando Africa. Instructions pertaining to readjustments in supply chains and postings will be distributed to all units within the month. Our Reich has a long history of overcoming the hurdles thrust upon it, whether by man or by fate. With the blood of a proud race in our veins, this hurdle shall be one from which we can emerge stronger than ever before. Signed, Hutig, Müller, and Schenk. Oh, that's not good. That is not good, man. Please don't unite into, uh, like, Gross Afrikanische Reichstadt. Please, 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 please. 
We're doing the best we can right now. But it's time. Everything is now in place. A provisional government ready to chart their new nation's course. A native army ready to defend itself against an any would-be overlord. And the foundation of an infrastructure and economy which need not rely on the death and slavery for sustenance. We're now ready to cut the last threads, keeping this cursed charade together. With the help of the CIA and the native resistance, we can ensure a quick and bloodless transition to a native rule, even as the Rex Commissariat itself will be struck by simultaneous attacks from both within and without. The end is near. Freedom lies just beyond our fingertips, coded in mana. But we will see, my friends. Oh, they're going back to Cape Town. They're going back. They're going back. Oh, and Will's peacefully reunified. Nice. Two percent. Two percent. Oh, our GDP is back up. Look at that. It was like three and a half. Now it's five point seven. Uh, they're still looking okay. They're. Losing, which is good to see. History will be kind of... It has to be, right? It has to be. Um, do both. Please kill off that division. Come on. Or take Cape Town back. Oh, you're going the wrong... Okay, you got it. Okay. They were going the wrong way for a while, so... We get 100 more political power. We get some more stuff. Stability wars for all good stuff, of course. How's Bennett doing? The death of Ho Chi Minh, unfortunate. Happy 1965, everyone. Um, honestly, is it the American Malays? Domestic discontent, very worrying. Nice. Very nice. Oh, they actually got it. Nice. History will be kind to us, hopefully. Followed up with, but it's time. Even though the CIA rejected us. And then to take our bow. The moment has come. Wolfgang Schenk has announced to us to, use, to his intention to dissolving this monster they call Rex Commissariat. Through our painstakingly established channels, he will declare the Angolan and Namibian people's freedom from the German yoke, rousing our native brothers to arms. The man himself has earned his salvation and will soon exchange our lands and his memories for a normal man's life. We, on the other hand, shall remain to man the new front line ourselves, veterans of a thousand battles both on the battlefield and within our recesses. We stand ready with our venerable war plans, or war planes for one last glorious fight. O oh, venerable Cleo, remember our sacrifice as we take our bow. Let our deeds gently fade into twilight, or let them shine in your annals as proof of evil man's redemptions. We leave you... We leave the choice to you. The cage is no more. Blood-soaked flowers have grasped its bars and broken free. We are ready to face our ultimate war with a small forward for freedom. Cape Town has fallen once again. That'll be fine. Do all that stuff. We have a little, a little, a little political power here too. Nice. Uh, let's get some cities. Um, what do we need here? Oh, we're actually doing okay here too. Nice. Um, well, actually, let's grab two of those. Thank you. And what else? Aluminum is fine. We have enough PP for this, so... Tungsten and Chromium. Well, we don't get any of that, so... Um, do we need steel at all? No, we on steel. Grab the infrastructure, then. Is it still very high? That sucks. Oh, now that's doing a lot better. Large scale exercises are good. Green is not good, but it's time, my friends. Oh, we're so close. A dream fulfilled. The war for independence will begin. Oh, it's not going to be good for us. Does, does this group have a unique focus tree? I'm not really sure. Rubber, Central Afrikanische. I just want to make sure Germany is pleased with us. The WRF is there, of course. You know what? Get that one, too. Why not? Ah, just get it all. I want to make sure Germany's kind of pleased with us for now so we can lower this at all. Nope. All right, then. Hey, 12 out of 20 is not bad. The Union of South Africa is looking a little better somewhat. Somewhat. Bum. Good. Let's up the planes. Take our bow. Alright, Onega. Hey, the Australians are back here. And what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. That's kind of exciting. And a dream fulfilled. 
Whoa! All right, the dream fulfilled. The bomber looks like a like all others in Sudfest Africa, an instrument of death, ready to unleash destruction upon all those unfortunate enough to find themselves under its shadow. The pilot and his native assistant walk towards it. The German, ready to depart towards his intended target, to fulfill his oath sworn duties to the Heimat. No, this is not how it is. It is instead Wolfgang Schenk pacing towards the aircraft beside Jonas Savimbi, ready for his last flight as Rex Homosar von Sudfest Africa. The Angolan rebel remains torn over his opinions of the white man, a stupendous pilot, sensitive, sentimental perhaps, but the Angola. The plan still seems unlike him even now. A German halts just before entering the cockpit and turns towards his rebel acquaintance. A bee passes before he's mustered his tone. I suppose there's not much else to say. Savimbi so shakes his head. Nope, there isn't. A lot of good things, a lot of things still to do. Safe travels. Of course, shake nods. Good luck. The German extends a hand. The Angolan shakes it with a small smile, eyes intense and eager. Without another word, Shank boards the plane and adjusts his cockpit's controls. Air tower bursts the go ahead while he's done don his goggles and checks the panels. The engine spider alive and he prepares for takeoff. Shank's hands throttle the lever to take off like he has so many times before. This experience felt different somehow. His gloves creased a smile as the landing gear parted with the earth. All those sleepless nights, those endless worries, his countless attempts at misdirection and subterfuge. Were they worth it? His answer comes deep from his belly, a strange unfamiliar sound, the sound of laughter. And now we have no focus tree, but I think I've got to save this for the last episode, because this is going to be probably relatively difficult, but it looks okay. All we have are infantry divisions that are 16 combat width, which are okay, but we're probably going to be struggling in the next episode. But hey, if you enjoyed this one, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. We actually have some manpower, and I'll see you tomorrow when we are going to struggle very greatly attacking the other Rikes Commissariats. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.